What's up guys, let's take a look at another Code Wars exercise. This one's called Guess the Gifts. We've got some wrapped boxes under the Christmas tree, and we've got some ideas of things we wish were in there, but we want to compare the traits of these and see which ones are possible. If I'm hoping for some little jewelry and I see a tiny box with expensive wrapping, well maybe that's the jewelry. If I'm hoping for a big dollhouse and they're all tiny boxes, well then I can rule out the dollhouse. Now, this is not guaranteed. Maybe you're looking for a PS5 and you see a box that's the right size, it's pretty heavy, and it turns out that there's an Xbox in there instead. Well, you did as best you could with the information you had. So we just want to return a list of the things on our wish list that we might be getting that we couldn't rule out. So let's take a look at the code. I'm going to write the final line first. I usually like to write, you know, the ending, the thing we're targeting, the line I wish I could write, even if it needs some setup. So we're going to return a list of the item names. And these guys are stored as dictionaries. So we don't say item dot name, we say item uh, key name. For item in wish list, if it's possible. So I haven't written the possible function yet, but once I do, this will be how I finish up. And I'm going to make the possible function separate instead of setting it inside of here, but it would work fine either way. So we're going to say possible, and it takes one item. I'm going to call it candidate. It's the thing that we're checking whether or not we can rule it out. And we're comparing it to all the presents. So we've reduced this by one dimension. The danger with this question is that you have for, 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 if, 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 a million indenting layers upon each layer because we're comparing every trait and everything against every trait and everything. So this reduces it by one. We're going from all the items to just one and then we're going to have to reduce it more. And to do that, I'm going to use the Python functions any and all, because those do a great job of expressing what we mean in English. And they mean the same thing they do in English. I'm going to say, if any of these presents, if any of these boxes cannot rule out the candidate, then it's possible. Okay. And how do we rule it out? We have to use the all to say, like, OK, I've got a list of traits. And obviously, the name doesn't matter, because we don't know the name of the thing in the box. But the other ones might matter, where we say, OK, this is medium size, and all the boxes are tiny, then we can rule it out. OK. Um, if it clatters a little bit, and none of them clatter at all, then we can rule it out. So we're saying all of the traits are possible. They're not guaranteed, but they're not ruling us out. And how are we going to use that? I'm going to use the uh, dot get method. Because um, that's what happens when you look something up in a dictionary. You always have this possibility of not finding it. right? Like, what if it's not there? For example, if I'm looking up the name, well, it's never going to be there for the um, wrapped guys. So I'm going to say uh, k and v for key and value. I could call them trait and content or something like that, but I'm just going to go k and v um, equals v. The v here is a default, and what we're using this for is just to be optimistic. So if I say, well, I don't know the name of the thing in the box, I'm going to assume that it's possible. It's a way to be optimistic and say, we're not ruling it out unless we're really ruling it out, unless the size is definitely wrong or the weight is definitely wrong or whatever. So 4kv and uh, candidate, and the way to get both sides of a dictionary is dot items. And then we have to say, OK, that was one guy. And we're not ruling it out unless, or we're not saying it's possible unless we've checked them all. Um, for present and presence. So that is not too bad. We have a double indent here, but it could have been a lot worse. It could have been like, check each item against each thing and go with each trait of each one, if, if, blah, blah, blah. And if I hit test, I think this is going to be good, because I just tried it a minute ago. And 
let's hit the solutions from other people and see how they do it with some different ideas. Somebody made a list and then we append to the list. Fair enough. I tried to keep it vague where I don't actually care about the names of the properties because, you know, in theory we could add others. Like, does it have air holes? Because that might be an animal. Or does it have really expensive wrapping paper? Because that means it's from grandma and she always spends a lot. I don't know. Something like that. This person actually used the specific traits of the present and looking for the specific trait in the uh, candidate or in the box that we don't see. And the benefit of that is you don't have to worry about the name. You don't have to say like, hey, this one has a name, but that one doesn't, blah, blah, blah. But the drawback is that you would have to change it if there were other traits in the future. I don't know. It's fine. This one is impressive because they do it all in one line, but that makes it really short names and you might not know like what the heck is I and P and J. I'm not even sure if the author would remember if we asked him or her right now. Uh, a different way of doing it with one line, and this is a lot closer to ours, they do the any and all stuff, they just uh, squish it together with really short names. However, I'm fine with this because I just did a similar thing, so maybe somebody who did a similar version of this would be totally ready to read this, you know. Um, here's one that's what I was talking about a minute ago. It's got one, two, three, four, five layers of indenting, um, and it could have been worse, right? So I usually try to avoid stuff like this because I find it hard to keep track. Like if I'm here, there's no way my brain is going to remember how I got here and um, how thin the narrowed focus is in that moment. Uh, this one's pretty cool. I like this because it's clear enough about, hey, we're checking these things, returning. It's, it's a lot like mine, just um, more targeted, and that's pretty cool. Here's another one with a ton of indenting. Um, you see that there's no colon here because these are like generator expressions to um, stack the loops inside of one big nested monstrosity. But it looks all right. I don't like the indenting, but I, I respect what they're going for. And as we'll see, we can um, scroll further and get, I, I do like this one, just visually, even before I think about the content. I like the way this is laid out. It doesn't go too far indenting. It takes things one at a time. Good stuff. Um, this one, I don't, even though I see what they're doing. I just don't like pushing it that deep, um, where like this line starts where some of the other lines end, you know? So anyway, I like this problem because it, first of all, is very real. You might do this uh, next month or the month after when you see presence, you might narrow it down in your head. And also because it's a way of managing all that logic, I like to think, okay, how can we do it without indenting more than two or three? How can we uh, use any and use all and use um, extracting one thing into another function? to combine some of these steps in a way that hopefully is easy to read, hopefully is more like English, and hopefully is more um, expressive of what we mean instead of nuts and bolts and losing the forest for the trees. Thanks.